Hey guys, Josh here. Today I'll be having a look at the Vivor Pneumatic Jack. And essentially what this is, is very similar to the airbags you find on the heavier vehicles on the road. You have a three bag system on this particular jack. And they give you some controls here. And basically you fill it with air and it lifts your vehicle up. So I'll be going through all the pros and cons that I find on this, things I do and don't like, and maybe some things that'll change in the future. And we'll see if it jacks up my little Honda Civic here. So with that said, let's get into it. Okay, so we'll start things off with the main part of the jack here. Um, obviously you have some wheels here that will help you position the jack far under a vehicle, let's say you're trying to get to the differential at the back of a truck, this will help you wheel that in under the vehicle and position it. You have your three bags here and your top plate and also your jack pad. Now a few issues I have with this jack pad, it's two degrees Celsius in my garage right now and this thing is really soft. Um, I don't think this will stand up to jacking on a, a pinch weld directly onto this pad. And I don't like this screw holding it in in the center here. I think this is way too soft. And if you were to put a pinch weld right on this bolt here, all the way to the vehicle is going to be on that bolt. And it can't be very big. I don't think it's any more than maybe a 5 16 or a metric eight, so an M8. And yeah, like this thing is just way too soft. It's not quite tall enough for what I would like. I know sometimes you get like um, side skirts and whatnot and they would hang down. So you'd need a taller block here anyways. So you'd be doing something like, let's say putting a piece of two by four there anyways. But if you were able to go directly on a pinch weld, I don't think this pad will stand up to that kind of abuse. Other than that, the top plate, really heavy duty looking, and I don't see any other faults. So what I'll do is I'll measure the minimum height here. See that there, so what we're doing is gonna be Measuring about to the bottom of this piece of wood. It's not perfect, but it gives you an idea. So we're, what is that? Five and a quarter, five and a quarter or, uh, what is that? 13.2? hundred and thirty two millimeters so that's not bad that's actually lower than the spec I think it calls for I'm just gonna pull it up here so it says the minimum heights 150 or 5.9 inches so that's actually good this will actually um, go under vehicles lower than it states I kind of suspect that once it gets up to max height it'll be also a little lower than it states so we'll bring it up to its max height here it goes up very fast um, here I'm gonna pan you out or pan you up a bit there we go and hopefully it stays in frame there so I'm gonna go up to max height that was max height right there once it's up to max height and it hits the stoppers I'm just gonna move you back a bit more Yeah, so once it hits the stopper, it's actually pretty stable. I still use jack stands. That's the proper and safest way to do it. But surprisingly, you know, you got to put your arm under there when you're putting the jack stand under the vehicle. So, you know, um, this is fairly stable once it gets up there. So now we'll measure the max height. 
and now we're at uh, just over 15 and a half or 396 millimeters and I'm gonna pull up the ad here again yeah so it says a max height of five and three quarter inch or 400 millimeters so it's a little shy on the maximum height not a huge huge problem because you can always stick a block on it uh, I know it's not proper proper practice but a lot of people do it including myself and obviously with it going down it takes a little longer because there's no weight on it now if you can hear you can see how jittery that is there we go so I'm pushing it on a bit of an angle that way and this is kind of what you get with these cheaper ones the centering cylinder in there is not perfectly machined and it has little concentric ridges on it and those catch on each other as it goes up and down if it's not perfectly straight so that is one of the drawbacks as well with this cheaper unit now one thing I saw there that you may not have noticed uh, yeah so there are there's some spots here where these screws are too long here I'm gonna get you on the handheld here and I'll show you what I mean okay it's gonna be a little shaky here but this is what I mean you see that poking out and you see the mark on the airbag there that's a big no-no you're putting up to 113 I think PSI is the max on these airbags I wouldn't want that poking on there and you say oh yeah but it's not touching when it's max height but as soon as you put it down a little bit there's still a bunch of weight on the vehicle and on this airbag so that's obviously something you're going to want to do is cut these shorter and I don't know how obvious it is but that isn't perfectly vertical either so I don't know if that's the plate that got shifted no that's uh that's not vertical either but it's the other way so this one's this this one is this way and this one is actually that way so that's another thing that you kind of lose out on while we're down here they give you this real cheap hose I didn't call it cut it to length yet because I want to review this unit before I decide to keep it or not but it's pretty standard down there and from what I can see, the screws on the bottom that attach the bottom plate um, do not look like they protrude at all. So it's just the top ones. That one there's a little close, but yeah, it's just the top ones that protrude. Yeah, like you can see, there's another one there. There's another one there. So that's obviously something I'm going to have to fix. Either by putting more washers here, which I probably won't do, or cutting the bolt a little shorter. So that's another thing to watch out for when you purchase one of these. And when it's going down, there is some give on it. Um, obviously, you're going to want some because if it's perfectly up and down, it's not going to rock with the car so and it does take a while if you don't have any weight on it okay so we'll move I'll flip it around and we'll have a look at the handle and the controls okay so obviously the hose comes through here there's just enough room for it to clear kind of don't like that but it's it's not hitting what I might end up doing is putting some split loom on this just to help protect it um, it's not the most durable hose and it's really stiff now that it's been out here in the cold um, the two halves of the handle so the upper half here with the controls and the lower half here are just held together with this it's not 
super durable. It moves. I also don't have them really tight, but it's not super durable. I'm, I might do something to fix that. Um, and this thing, the tolerances are not great. However, it is nice. It's adjustable to, let's say, like a 45. So you can easily get it there. Or you can go pretty much right down flat. So you can go right under vehicles there. Um, I don't like how high you got to lift this thing. So that's, that's it resting down. And then you got to lift it way up here before it catches so that you can move the thing around. So that may or may not be a good thing. I may have to fix that in the future. Um, so going up, I have a picture that I'll post either on my review on Amazon or definitely on my website at some point in this top handle. One of the two parts of the handle had a really sharp piece of metal right where the hose was going to go. So watch out for that. Uh, this does not come connected in the box. You got to connect it. And up here, we've got our safety relief valve, our inlet, and our outlet. This is um, this was loose, so obviously you're gonna want to tighten that when you get it. It's still loose. I'm not putting this into service yet, but it's just some sintered metal. You're going to 100% want one of these in here otherwise it's going to be super super loud so definitely get one of those these are ball valves i wouldn't call them the highest quality like i've i've broken multiple of these kinds that came with equipment before trying to tighten them but it looks like they're threaded in so you can replace them which is nice um and then a con for some people it's going to be this fitting right here so if you are buying this and you don't have the capability of doing this V-style fitting, you're going to want to get either an M-style, which is the most common that I've come across, at least here in Canada, or an A-style, which is the second most common that I've come across. So that is going to be a big issue for some people. Uh, for me, though, I have one of these multi 5-in-1 things from... Uh, Milton and it just it goes on there no problem so that I don't have an issue with but just be aware if you are buying this make sure you have at least an extra one of these that is male thread to thread it into this ball valve this one is also not a super high quality ball valve oh come on focus so keep that in mind um, Obviously, what I believe I'm going to operate it in is down uh, valve in and up valve out. So that way I don't accidentally hit this guy once. I like to keep a little bit of pressure of the jack on the vehicle, even with jack stands under it. Just because every little bit helps, just in case, while you're working under that vehicle. This is just stamp steel it's got little handle spot things for your fingers they don't line up real well but they work i think you're supposed to use three fingers like that so that's fine um that's pretty much it like this this slop is not very nice i might either remake this bracket here which is also not square i don't know why but you know maybe the guy was drunk drilling those holes and didn't end up being square but I don't I don't like the amount of slop in this I understand there has to be some but I think there's too much side to side slop so a few nylon washers in there might fix it we'll see um, and one thing before I conclude this video I just want to see this here I'm obviously going to put this back on before I jack up the car, but yeah, it's just, just a threaded hole. So that's, that's not a very big 
bolt. So if you were to put this on a pinch weld and the pinch weld to, were to rest exactly on that bolt, you're basically going to damage that hole. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, things I would, I'm going to plan on doing with this is definitely do something with this pad. What I might do is a threaded pin and then interchangeable blocks that I can put on it directly without having a pad. I am definitely going to do something about the slop in this, at least the side to side. I know the front to back, there's not much you can do because uh, that's part of the design. And then the last thing I think I'm going to do is when this guy is all the way down, like so, it, it rests right on the ground. So I think what I'd like to do is, yeah, put, put some sort of padding under this so that it's not resting right on the block there. And then that way it's not screwing up the paint on the underside of this. So that'll be, that'll be pretty simple. You just stick on a piece of foam or something there. But yeah, so I'll set this up and then we'll see how long it takes to jack up my Civic. Okay, let's see if I can film this and operate it at the same time. You can see I have a block of wood under there and right now it is just contacting the car and I've got the parking brake on and a wheel chalk at the back. So I've got shop air running at 90 PSI. Eh, compressor might turn on, but we'll see here. And three, two, one, go. And I think that's at max height. <laughs> Not very long at all to jack up a car. Uh, so you can see I've got both my wheels up off the ground there. There is a jack point on this car up front here. So it's no problem at all to jack it up from there. Now, the one thing I was saying is you can see all this plastic around here. So all that plastic has the potential of hitting this pad. So that's why I kind of wish that, you know, this block was a little bit taller sometimes. So yeah. So what I'll do is I'll set it back down. We'll see how long it takes to set down and headphone warning for people. And there it goes, it's all the way down. So pretty nifty setup. I'm definitely going to be taking advantage of this jack uh, during tire change season. So all you do is you lift this up, drag it out, and you go to the back and do the same thing. So I'll... Uh, go to the pinch weld and I will show you jacking that up. Okay, the light, lighting might be bad, but I've got this just touching the pinch weld. I'm just going to see how much that rubber folds. Yeah, it's hard to tell, but that that rubber is definitely pinching. Let me reposition this. Hold on. Yeah, you can kind of see it's it's hard to tell, but you can tell that this is not oh, supporting a lot of weight here, and it would definitely be hitting that screw uh, with how much this is sinking in. So I don't, I don't really trust this pad here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the block on there and we'll see how long it takes to jack up a corner of the car. 
Okay, so I got my wooden block under there. And what we'll do is we'll just put it up in the air. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> I would say that is probably pretty close to max height. Way higher than I'd need to do the uh, tires with, actually. So high that back tire came off the ground as well. So, yeah, that's, uh, that is that. Now, part of the concern is, for some people, is when you put it down, it's going to be jittery, so... Headphone warning, and we'll be going down. Okay, so definitely more jittery going down because it's on such an angle, tilted that way, lifting up just a corner of the car. So obviously you're going to want to be careful if you have one of these putting the car down. And alternatively, you could get two of these and do both sides at the same time, but that's a huge waste of money. So I will do my final conclusions here, and I'll let you know what I plan on doing with this jack. Okay, so conclusion time for the Vivor. Uh, pneumatic jack here. Uh, let's start with the pros. The pros are lifts my car very quickly. Um, you know, I have I don't have a full size pickup truck. I can try this jack on, so your mileage may vary there. But for my Honda Civic, it works amazing. Uh, lifts it up very quickly. So there's that. Second pro I would say is. You don't have to worry about space constraints around the vehicle as much because since the shop air does all the work lifting the car, you don't need to have a lot of space in behind the jack to operate the handle to pump the jack up. So that's another pro for this. Third pro I would say is probably the price. Uh, even though this isn't the most perfect fit and finish, um, $220 on Amazon is what I paid. It, it's about right. Uh, to give you some context, a company called Zendex builds these as well. And they build them in the U.S., I believe. And much higher quality. Problem is, for example, uh, through work, so with my discount, I was quoted about $700 for a two-bag pneumatic jack. Um, and then a three bag, I believe was about around $1,200. So that's way out of most people's price range for an at home garage, you know, jack. So, uh, and that doesn't even come with the extended handle. So, you know, I haven't used the Zendex, um, pneumatic jacks. It's just from what I've seen from reviews online, but they, they are built a lot higher quality from what I've seen. Again, that's just from seeing reviews. I don't have one, and I probably never will. Um, so, you know, $220 for this thing, I can accept some of its flaws. Um, now, speaking of flaws, it has flaws. Uh, the two big ones for me. First one is... These screws, they protrude out the bottom of the top plate. So, you know, over time, it might not happen today, might not happen tomorrow, but I feel someday that's going to wear through the rubber of these airbags and you're going to have a leak or a rupture. I don't want that. So that's a big, a big issue for me is those. The bottom plate seems okay, but I would check both the top and bottom plate if you decide to get one of these. The other con I have is this jack pad. Um, it's too soft for my liking. Of course, it'll protect the car. Problem is, um, unless you're jacking on a nice big flat spot, if you put a pinch weld on this bolt, 
you're putting all the weight of that jack spot on that bolt or at least most of it and that's not a very big bolt and you're going to get issues with it breaking or damaging the threads or something so that's a con um the other con is this like it's not affecting the operation of the jack so much as just this friggin thing is going to annoy me the slop in this i wish it was a little tighter tolerance in that um arm and bracket down there yeah like that's that's gonna piss me off so i i you know it's nice that it's adjustable but yeah that's that's gonna piss me off it's not a huge con that's more of an annoyance but yeah definitely definitely these screws and then the jack pad i would i would do something or at least 100% make sure you're not putting a pinch weld on that bolt there. Um, what else? What would I change on this? Obviously, the bolts I'd shave off. Um, that jack pad. So this here, I would change it to something similar to what the Zendex ones are. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the Zendex ones, they have a traditional looking jack pad with a pin on the bottom which goes into a hole in the top plate what i might end up doing is using the thread hole in the top plate of this and just putting a pin that sticks out of the top plate and then you put your jack pad on that pin to locate it so it doesn't move on the top plate um this handle here, I'm going to have to either remake the, the handle or the bracket or both or do something uh, just to get rid of this slop here. Uh, at least it comes in two pieces, so, you know, if I need to, I could just replace the bottom part instead of trying to um, save this block here. So, yeah, um, that is pretty much it. If you have any questions I will try and answer them the best I can I'll be doing a review and tear down and stuff when I work on this jack to make it a little better on my website so keep an eye out for that and other than that thank you for checking out the video and I'll catch you in the next one